Hey people, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And, and this, this is, is season four, four of Better, Better Let, Let Me, Me Tell You. you. Together, is baby. that a verb? I mean, if Google can be a verb. Okay. Wait, are we recording? What do you think? Yes, we are. That's why we're platicating. Platicating. <laughs> Welcome to episode 151, everybody. <laughs> Woohoo! Here, we made it past the 150. We did. We made it past Now we're 49 episodes away from our 200th episode extravaganza, which. <laughs> damn Vamos it, a ver que algo. We're going to rent the FTX Arena. The f- the f- arena? Yes. <laughs> By that time, they'll be well into their new name. I, you know what? We probably can't because they're probably only going to accept the payment in Bitcoins. Oh, no. Not the Bitcoin. And we have... I don't know how to do cryptocurrency. Neither do I. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 50, 151. How yes, is everybody's 151 week? 151 with two hosts que estamos grabando y medio vacunado. Oh, yes. Yes, we got vaccinated this We're week. halfway there, yeah. We're halfway there. Well, you got the Johnson & Johnson, you're, you know. Yeah, but the Johnson Johnson's only, what, 70% effective? Seven, 75. But yeah. Uh, what, did, what did you get? Pfizer. Oh, me too. How was your vaccination process? Well, no, I did it at Tropical Park. Uh-huh. So I just, it was a drive through vaccination. A drive through vaccination? <laughs> a drive through vaccination. It's funny because my, um, so my sister-in-law, uh, she calls me, and it, it you know, it's just... The, the times that we live she's like oh my god oh my god Jackson has the vaccinations open oh my god I'm sending you the link right now like like if you this know what? was like if it was like freaking tickets to the hottest concert in town okay but you know what at least estamos mejorando because a year ago that phone call would have been like oh my god the Publix on 87th and Bird has toilet paper yes so at no, least no, now we're yes. at least now we're we're, talking, we're, we're, we're running for vaccines yes. but it was like like yeah the, trying to get the, the hottest ticket like, in town right <laughs> And then it's funny because, like, she sends me the link, but then I was, you know, I was at Baptist Hospital. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I guess with their Wi-Fi, I, I couldn't get through. Yeah. So, she, you know, she's like, did you get through? Did you get through? And I'm like, no. And she's like, give me your deets. I'll like, get it for you. <laughs> and she got me She got me the appointment. And, you know. This really does sound like when you would try to get Ticketmaster tickets. Yes. It, that's it what really I'm does. You, it yeah. does. It yeah. does. Loaning of Antawa was to go to Ricky's Records. <laughs> Ahí en Coroway, la 97. La 95, yeah. yeah, and you know, wait outside, yeah, outside for a freaking ticket. Yeah, it's a look of a dollar. Uh, yeah, and I remember... It's so funny tickets because, was fun when I worked at Specs. Oh my God, that's right. You worked at Specs. I always forget that you worked at Specs because you worked at Specs in your later years. Yeah, just like a little like side job. Right, it wasn't yeah. like... Uh, the high school game. Right, 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 right. Were you in college or was it post college? It was post college. I was already at MEC. Right, so you're probably like the oldest person there. Oh, aside from the manager, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you were probably like 27, and probably like yeah. everybody else was like 16. Right. Yeah. Um. Wait, you worked on the specs in Kendall? Yeah, yeah. Right. The best specs was one. May it rest in peace. A in US one. And US one. Yeah. And now it's a fucking Chase Bank. Like of everything that it could have turned into, it's like it turned into a bank. Like, yeah. how do you honor the legacy of such a great record store? You know, you get a hip and turn it into a bank, you know? But yeah, those were the days, right? Like, mm-hmm. that you would go get tickets at, like, record stores. Yeah. And and when they would sell. I'll never forget, I got, I saw Mariah Carey in the Music Box Tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and I bought the tickets at the Tracks in Town and & Country. And don't you remember they wow. would show, well, you worked it, so you remember. They would show you, like, the seating. Yeah, the little chart, the the, the booklet. Yes, yeah. of the arena. And it's like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, now I do. Like, now I know seating arrangements. And, like, but back a, then, we didn't have such access to it. So, right. yeah, the chart meant nothing. It's yeah. like, oh, I don't know. Like, is that close? I'm only an inch away from the arena, like, from the stage. <laughs> How bad can that be? You know, scale to what? Yeah, exactly. There are no bad seats at the Fix Arena. Yeah, Fix <laughs> Arena. So, <laughs> so how is everybody? Uh, you know, I have to say on a personal note, this week, I started the week off feeling a little like ugh, drag assy, sluggish or whatever. But after Tuesday night, when we all went to dinner, like us mm-hmm. and all our friends, you mm-hmm. know what? I woke up Wednesday very happy. Mm-hmm. 
So, yes. So, we had a, a reunion. See, because of the thing is that, uh, well, you know, in 151 episodes, <laughs> we made it very clear that we're all still very much uh, friends with, like, our group of high school. We're yeah. all very, very, very... Yeah. We're still connected. Connected. We're, we're still, still the know. best of friends. Um, but collectively, the nine of us, you know... It's hard to get this together. And... Together, collectively. Like, all nine of us at one time. Because, right. you know, some, you know, one of our friends lives in Milwaukee. Another one lives in Atlanta. Another so, one, he's always traveling. Right. So, work. it's, like, hard to get all nine of us. So, it's funny because two of our out-of-town out friends, like the one from Milwaukee and the one from Atlanta, they were in town this week for different matters, obviously. And <clears throat> me, even with all like, that was <laughs> going on. You had a lot going on this week. This week, I, I sent that text. And yeah. I was like, we need to get together because this doesn't yeah. happen, you know. It just doesn't happen it often. It doesn't happen, you know, when all nine of us yeah. are like in the same place. So we did and it was great. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny. I just because- wanted to say it. I just, I mean, I mean, I, like I literally woke up on Wednesday just like, you know what? I'm going to go run a marathon today. Like It's I so just- funny because, and, and, and I'm sure this happened. I mean, I'm sure, no, it does happen with all friendships that are last for so long. It doesn't matter how long you don't see someone or how long a group is collectively together. Right. But when you see someone or you are together as the group again, you pick up right where you left off. Yeah, everybody just fell back into their roles and right. everybody fell you know, yeah. yeah, everybody has a role and everybody kind of has like a thing. And it's just, it, it doesn't matter like what direction your life takes you. Yeah. Um, that happens. So, you know, it's it, it, it's it's very interesting and it's, it's, uh, it's very telling. So, yeah. so I had a really interesting week. Uh, I... Um, before we get into your week, can I just plug one thing? What? Wednesday, April 21st, join us as we host trivia at Beat Culture Brewery. Oh my God, yes. I want to make sure we put it at the beginning of the episode in case some people trail off at yes. the end. I'm so excited about <laughs> <Yes>. Trivia Night. <laughs> yes. So, so, Wednesday, so, you know what? Let's talk about Trivia Night for yeah. a minute. So, yes, as I said, we're going to be hosting Trivia Night on the 21st of April at Beat Culture. We're super excited about that. But one of the reasons we want to do this is because Miami, for being such a big city, there isn't like a trivia night culture here. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. And, and, and it, exi- and it does exist, a, it, but it's very hard to find. Right. And Right. If it's hard to find, then it's not a thing. Well, okay, fair enough. Right. Because everywhere else, it's like such a thing, like trivia. Yeah. I mean, there's people that have like make t-shirts and shit. So like, <coughs> it becomes super competitive. Excuse me. Yeah, no, like, it, they, it's like every, you know, Wednesday of the third Wednesday of every month, they know that they're going to be... Right, in trivia. Yeah. yeah. And it, I, what I love about trivia is that it's fun, right. but there's something for everybody, right? Because if you do a, a good, like, game, like, oh, yeah, the times that I would go visit in New York, we always went to trivia. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. And it was didn't, like, one, there was one time that we got really close, We right? got, like, second or third. Yes. Yeah. yeah Out that, of, like, seven teams, not, like, yeah, three teams. Yeah, yeah. There were a bunch of teams, yeah. and we, we were, like, in the, yeah, the top yeah, two And it was three. just you and me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's another thing, right? When it's, like, six people... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, somebody theoretically, somebody's got everything covered, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but we're really excited about that. Um, yes. We hope we could kind of, <laughs> we hope to turn it into like a, a regular thing. Yeah, and we know? hope that it becomes a thing because yeah. trivia night is so fun. Also, two dollar tacos that night. Yes, it's tacos and trivia. I mean, what, <laughs> what could be better? You know what could be better? Two for one beer for if you're playing trivia. Well, there we go. Yep. Tacos, trivia, and beer. Yep, and you can win a, a $25 gift card. We're probably going to give some t-shirts away. So Trust us. You will be hearing a lot more yes, from here to yes, then about yes. that. But. Just wanted to make sure we put it out there. So, so yeah. So, this week I had a really interesting uh, week. Not interesting, but um, maybe... It, it was maybe, very full. Maybe it comes across or maybe it doesn't come across in the podcast, but I generally... I'm the type of person that has a thousand things going on at once. And I'm not kidding. Like, a thousand. Like, if you look at my calendar on my um no let, let, no no the fact that you now have a calendar r- right. speaks volumes right i have a calendar <laughs> and like even when ish calls me on like projects for the podcast i have to be like hold on let me check the calendar to see if i have anything on the calendar um because i just like there are days that have like six seven things going on and it's like oh my god i want a nap <laughs> That's why I tell you that when I take Tristan to school, that one hour, that one hour, hour and a half. Well, that's why I don't bother you for every saying morning, elsewhere hour. You know, before that, that guy really start my day right. that I've been watching saying elsewhere in the morning. It's like, please, this is the one hour a day that I get to myself and it's quiet. 
they're like enjoy the silence Depeche Mode but anyway <laughs> so my mom this week had surgery and she was in the hospital for like four days she's okay now she's home um so something really interesting or like a, a really cool observation happened while I was in the waiting room so um a Baptist which I mean they were doing this before coronavirus as well um you know, you have the waiting room for people that are in surgery. Right. Yes, 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 right? yes, yes. Um, And look, and now there could only be one person there. Per yeah, it's more patient. restrictive now. Right? And, 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 and at Baptist, at least, there's one person per patient to visit you permanent. Like, for the duration of your For stay. the duration of your visit. So for mm-hmm. my mom, it was only me. Like, my dad couldn't go visit her, or neither could my, my right, brother. Right. Like... I was the registered. You were person, the designated. So visitor. I was the only person I could go visit her. Mm-hmm. My brother snuck in one day. <gasps> but shh, <laughs> we're only telling you. We're only telling you guys. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so there I was in the waiting room, right at Baptist, and it's very big and it's very comfortable. And there was probably, I would say, about twenty people there, mm-hmm. right? And you know what they do is. Uh, they have two people in reception there mm-hmm. and then they, they when the surgery has started, mm-hmm. they'll tell the person, the surgery has started. They'll keep you informed. Right, they'll keep right. you informed. Okay. Then they'll tell you the surgery has ended. Mm-hmm. And then when the surgery's ended and the person is recuperating, the doctor will come to the waiting room and speak to the person. Okay, so they keep you updated. Right, right. They keep you updated, and then the doc- it ends with the doctor telling you, oh, you know, surgery went fine. This is what we did, blah, blah, okay. blah, whatever. So, so it's very organized. I give them credit for that. It's very organized. So remember a couple of, I think it was like maybe in season two or something, um, we had that whole like conversation where we were like the Cuban and Hispanic way of going to the yes, hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, somebody has to sleep over. You right. know, <laughs> así como en que pasa USA. Que pasa USA. Yeah, yeah. Don't take away my baby. You know, like, <laughs> Juana llevó la muda completa. Right. That is very true. Right. That is how it is. Right. When my grandmother is ever in the hospital or any family member, somebody stays with you overnight. Like, if. Yeah, for the most like, part. Yeah, like, that is not. It's, it's non-negotiable. Right. That is debatable. And at one time, at one point, you know, we're all in the situation. There's like seven, eight people in the room, you know, when really there could be two. And right. Then, you know, but everybody you looks talk. the other way. Right. Everybody looks the other way. But every now and then it'll get a really, re- get really loud. And, and they'll like, be like, bah, la, wo, bah, right. 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 We, right. So we right. had a whole conversation we all know the game. about right. this. Right. So this is, this is my updated version of that. Okay. So when I was in this room... Waiting. And this is why being like Cuban and being or Hispanic is like so amazing. Like it's so like hilarious. So, you know, the the doctors would come in and speak to the people waiting there who were like white. Okay. And be like, oh, you know, Sally's doing great. <laughs> oh, that's great, doctor. <laughs> Sally, you know, it's great. Right, right, right. Thank and you so much. They right. would go back and stay there, you know, right, right. until because then, you know, they take the person to pre-op and then right, right. usually in an hour you could see them. So you still stay there. So I'd be like, oh, thank you, doctor. So that I gauged, it was surprisingly low on Spanish-speaking people that day at Baptist. From what you could see. From what I could see. Okay. There was me and this, you know, um, a redhead lady on the other corner. I'm guessing not a natural redhead. Not a natural redhead. Okay, okay. And this is what I found <laughs> What I found hilarious. So when the doctors would come and speak to the other people, oh, again, you know, Sally was great. You right, know, right, right. whatever. You Everything know, was great. Ha- it was great. Right. When the doctor came and spoke to the other lady... Uh-huh. Ay, qué bueno, roja. qué bueno. Uh-huh. She'll pick up her phone. Mimi, <laughs> ya operaron a Soraya. No, todo bien, todo bien. Next call. Mima, ya operaron. Oh, she was going down the list. Ya operaron a Soraya. No, gracias a Dios que todo bien. La vesícula está de lo más bien. No tienen que operar la vesícula. <laughs> Joseito, ya operaron a... Like, she went down the Rolodex, Right? <laughs> When they came and gave me the status of my you mother, you did the exact same thing, I didn't you? Papa, <laughs> I pick up my brother. I I did like twenty calls. You did the same thing, and I'm like, okay. So I thought it was so funny that here we were, you know, me and the other Cuban lady practically giving a press conference. Birds of a like, feather, babe. Like, Birds of a feather. And everybody else in there, well, you know, okay, thank you so was, much. Right? Oh, thank you so much. And you know what? And the other people probably just texted everyone. Maybe they texted. They probably just texted. Right, right, right. right. But when but you're no, but, but when you're calling to you know somebody that's in surgery, you don't text. 
Right, you, right, right. You're, you call. I even called like people from my office. Like, <laughs> hey, Esther. <laughs> My mom is, thank God, great. Oh, my God. How wonderful. Yes. Yes. Like, yeah, I was like, because she, that the other lady got the news first. Okay. Right? Right, right. And she was being very loud. But it's okay. Porque no she casar, was happy. No tuvieron que sacar la vesícula. La vesícula a Soraya. That's, that's, that's true. That's true. Um, so she was happy. That's right? True. But I was like, this is so like, this is, it's so, again, the essence of who we are. Right. That, yeah. you know, everybody else, okay, that's great news. Great, great, great. Right, internalize it. Right, but, uh, but but us, Mimi, oye, a Soraya está, ay, gracias a Dios que está bien. Sí, 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 sí. sí yeah, and, and, and it and, wasn't even like, walk outside and take your phone no, calls. No, no, Why? No, no, no. Why? Why no, bother? No, no, no. Why bother? Sí, sí, sí. No, no. No es que no me puedo quedar con ella, sí. Pero yo, no, cuando yo la vea, yo la llamo. Yo la llamo, ok. Ok, ok. <risa> Mi tica, oye, ya, 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 sí, gracias a Dios el doctor vino conmigo. Ajá. I love it. And I love how, like, every time, which was the same with me, you were giving the same news, but the story always was different. <risa> Isn't that amazing? It, it, it was the same things. Mom is out of surgery. Right, right. right? The, the news didn't change. Mom, thank God, the surgery went well. She's out of surgery. Right. But the the story was the delivery. different every time. The it delivery, was, yes. And I was like, oh, it's, it's delicious. That like, is one of those moments where you're just like, you know, this is just perfect. It's, it's, it's like, just perfect. It's like, yeah. <laughs> That's why when I, when I saw her... And I, yeah, she caught my attention, but then I was like, shit, I'm doing the same exact thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. You just saw her. You saw yourself in her. Right. That's because what it was. The thing was that with my phone, you know, I would put my phone down because like I took a book and all that. Like I would put right. my phone down for maybe 20 minutes and I'd have like 30 texts. How is she? How is she? What's the status? How is she? How is she? How is she? How is she? Right. Right. So I know if I was on the other end, I wouldn't want to text. I'd be like, you call me right. and you tell me, you know. Especially um, if you know. Right. So I just thought I was like, oh, you know. This is making it on the show this week. My observation. So well, there you go. So, but you know, thankfully, my mom's home and everything's okay. Well, that's so. good. That's good. But so I don't know because I know you've had a very full week. But speaking of large families, have you heard about uh, the? I'm going to call it a non-troversy because it's not a controversy. But have you heard of the kerfuffle with um, you know, the famous Kardashian clan this week? Ugh, I, I mean, I don't. Know what is? Does <laughs> Chloe have migraines again? <laughs> well, actually, it does involve Chloe. It does involve Chloe. It does. It does involve like, Chloe. Why, I'm sorry, Stephanie. Like, why are we even... Whatever. Okay, tell me. Well, okay. Aside from the fact that her latest migraine commercial, when she turned around, the first time I saw it, I didn't know it was I her. I didn't know it was her either. That is so... Oh, my God. I was... I thought it was like one of those... Like, like some animation from the Polar that Express. That is so funny you said that. Because I... Okay, I knew that it was her because she's the spokesperson right. for that. But you didn't know it was her because visually. That's somebody else. That's another human that being. That could have been a, you know, a bot. It could have been me. <laughs> it could have been you with a wig. With a wig. Yeah. Who knows? So apparently this week, the, a picture was posted on her Instagram by her assistant or whatever. That it was not an authorized picture. Oh, no. And it was a picture of her just like, I think, like in a, in a bikini. Has the picture been taken out? Well, her let me, let me get there. So it was a picture of, of her in a bikini. It wasn't touched up. It wasn't done. She looked normal. Right. She looked like probably what Khloe Kardashian looks like when she steps out to Target or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, her legal team has been sending out, you know, uh, cease and desists. To who? To everyone to take it down. So, of course, I wanted to bring it up so that we would post it in the hopes that we get one too. <laughs> um, and then on top of that, you know, what I found the most interesting is like the pictures are... I mean, she looks like a normal girl. Like, she looks like a normal human being. She's... She doesn't look like some animatronic Disney thing, you know, that that somebody heard this is what this person looks like. What I find most insulting is that her whole spiel of it is that, you know, it wasn't an authorized picture. It went up by accident, whatever, you know. But she's like, well, you know, the thing is, her statement is something to the effect of like, while the picture is beautiful, um, you know, and, 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 and I look great or whatever. It's just, and I'm actually looking for the... Yeah, no, I'm looking for, 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 for the oh the photo that was okay. Here's, here's what their statement said: the photo that was posted this week was beautiful. But as someone who has struggled with body image her whole life, when someone takes a photo of you that isn't flattering in bad lighting or doesn't capture your body the way it is after working hard to get it to this point and then shares it to the world, you should have every right to ask for it not to be shared, no matter who you are. Was it this picture? Yeah, she looks fine there. She looks like she looks like any other any other woman. Yeah. She looks nice. She looks cute. Now, okay, here's the thing. Here's my problem with it. Number one, I agree with the statement and so far as, you know what? 
if there's an unflattering picture of you and you don't like it, you know what? Take it down. Okay, fine. You know what? Everybody has those days. Everybody is like, I look so ugly, blah, blah. That's fine. But the problem with them is not so much that it was a quote unquote unflattering photo, is that it was a photo of who you actually are. And especially with her, because out of all of them, I feel like she's been the one who's been like all, at least historically, correct me if I'm wrong, because I feel you know a little bit more about them than I do, has been outspoken How about. How do I know more about them than you do if I have like no interest in them? I don't know. I ask myself that question too, <laughs> because I have no interest in them. I think they're pretty toxic. But How yet, do I know yet, as much as I know? But yet about here we them? are. I'm not sure. But uh-huh. but her thing has always been. I felt with Chloe specifically was like you know the quote unquote like I don't give a fuck attitude. Like you know what? Like be yourself, show yourself. You know warts and all, and blah blah blah. And so it's like you know not that I go to the Kardashians as a bastion of you know model you know behavior to model, but it, it especially coming from her it just reeks of right. But the problem is the problem is that. And again, the picture is cute. Them, look, I don't like to be critical of celebrities because you never know their truth, right? That's why when you hear terrible things about celebrities, but that's not what we're talking about, right? Right, now. right. I'm, I'm, I'm always like, I, you know, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but I, I, I generally don't believe things about celebrities because, you know. It, from tabloids right, to right. You know, disgruntled assistants or right. whatever. Everybody wants to create a narrative about you, right. you know? Um, because look, Naomi Campbell, now he said disgruntled uh, employees, assistants, yeah. employees, you know, has a reputation for being a horrible, horrible human being. But then there's other people that say that she is the nicest person there is. Right. So where's As long the as truth? she's not holding a phone, it's fine. Right. Where's the truth? You know, is she somebody that's nice to deal with that when she gets mad, she'll fucking throw the phone at you? Right. Or like... Or is she just a raging bitch all the time? Right. Like, right. you know, the truth is something Sometimes a lot of a lot of times in the middle. Right. So, but with the Kardashians is very different because th- I I don't have and and I'm I'm generally very understanding and I'm not a judgmental person and and even if I find myself judging, I am like I, I catch you try myself. to temper it, yeah. But with them, it's like everything negative that gets said about them. It's like this is what you put yourself up to. Right. right, you created this monster. You created this monster, and the whole thing of her, you know, whatever. I, I just, I don't believe anything from them is authentic. Nothing. I believe that everything about them is manufactured, and everything is, um, everything is calculated. Mm-hmm. So even her whole like, oh, you know, I'm like the tough one. I don't take any shit. I believe right. I don't believe none of that either. That's just her character that's just, on the show. That's just her character on the show, and you know, I understand what she said. Right? Because, yeah, I get upset, you know, when, whenever you, I mean, even here, when you posted a picture of us yeah. in the podcast that I don't like the picture, I'll be like, oh, okay. You take it down. You yeah, know, yeah. Take it down or like whatever. Or you didn't have a better picture to post right, or, or, or something. Right, right, right. 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 But so I understand that statement. But I think that the problem why for her it's such a big thing because I think that most people would have probably been like, they would have brushed it off. Right. Right, and they would have probably said, "Hey, can Actually, you?" For the most part, they probably. Oh, I'm sorry, you meant the, her or the public? The the person. Oh, oh, the, oh person. the person. The person. I think most people would have brushed it off and been maybe to their publicist, "Hey, can you make sure that this doesn't happen again?" But the problem is that with them, they have such a manufactured image right. that anything that leaks that does not go with that narrative and that image is a big issue, right? So I just saw the picture. I think she looks fine in the picture. In fact, I think she looks. Better. better natural yeah. because she especially her she looks like a human being she when she is like made up like she doesn't look she doesn't look real like I I I think I've said this before on the show she and pictures and I'm not saying this to be mean or be extra critical her pictures look CGI like they don't look like she looks like an extra from the Polar Express she, she doesn't look when I mean natural I don't even mean like you know, when you look at somebody, oh my god, they've had a lot of work done. Right, right, right. I don't even no. mean it in that sense. It's I mean, airbrushed to death. She doesn't look like a human being. Like right. it looks CGI. Right. And it's like a regular picture of her in whatever magazine. Right, right, right. And 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 with them, everything is so fake and everything is so manufactured that like the moment that again you deviate from that narrative and you show a glimpse of reality, ironically, it it, it, it just that no no. And I just I've said this time and time again. I feel that I, that we, are not in the position to talk uh, about what is best for women and best for, you know, teenage girls. Because, you know, we're not women. True. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but body dysmorphia but, exists but all across the board. I, I, I've said this time and time again. I, 
and look, Kim Kardashian is hot. Like, there's no taking away from that, right? right. But I think that the image that they have capitalized on, I, I, I really do think is unhealthy because it's a standard of beauty that is not achievable by most, in this case, women and specifically young women simply because of resources. It just is not. It's also okay. not achievable because most of it happens behind filters and CGI and Photoshop. Right, but they, so but, it's, you, you can't even look right, at that but, in real but, life. But the thing with them is that everything, if you had. everything about them from both the natural state and the digital state mm -hmm. is altered because they've all had work done. Right. All of them have had work done. And then on top that they have work done, they live with, you know, they have access to the best of, everything, of the yeah. best. Yeah. They work with, you know, designers, makeup artists, hair people, you know, photographers, lighting. Everything is a, an illusion and a facade. And then on top of that, their images are, are altered. Right. So right. like everything from the very, like... Who you are as a person to the final product. Uh, product it's a product. It, it, it is every every step of it is is not natural. Right, right. And again, it's not a matter of... It's another step removed it's, from it's reality. It's not a matter of filtering something because... We you all know use what? filters. It, it, I use filters. We all use filters. Right. Everybody I mean, uses filter. But one thing is for you to take a picture of yourself and you're like, oh yeah, maybe you have a blemish in your face or, or something that you want right. to filter that kind of smooths that out. That's one thing. Right. Mm. But another thing is when like everything is so doctored that it's like it's not real anymore. Right. And and that's why I think I think that that is a huge problem with young girls. Because la misma eh, Kylie Jenner, that girl had had a ton of work done by the time she was 18. Because if you look at her pictures beforehand, like right. it's not even that she just said the baby fat right. and it's a right. completely different person, right. you know, and this is a person who has a hundred million plus followers on Instagram, you right. know, that young girls look up to. Right. And then, you know, it, it, th that's why I think this whole body image thing is so contrarian because like she, there you go, Chloe, she's somebody who she says she's, you know, had body image issues all her life. Right. And when the show started, I could see how that was true because she, I don't think she looked bad when the show started. But Kim was the bombshell. The but other, she, but she, she was looked, the heavier of the she, three. She looked she, like a know. normal woman. She right. looked like the type of girl that if you worked with, you would have been like, oh, Chloe's cute. That's true. Yeah. 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 Chloe's cute. Right. But oh, compared to the other two. Who are like bombshells. Right. right. She looked, she, I understand that. Right. And I understand that living in that shadow can you be, especially when all the attention was to your older sister. Oh, how hot she is. Oh, how right, hot right. she is. It messes with your head. Right. Yeah. It messes with, I understand that. But, you know, she is adding to that very. She's, she's adding to her to own that, narrative. To, right. To that very machine that she. Criticizes. Criticizes and caused her issues. She is a very big part of. Because if not, then she wouldn't care that, you know. Right. This picture went out. Or at least not to the point that they're sending cease and desist letters. Right, right. Right? Right. Because you know what? She could have put that same post. She could have uh, put up. She could have kept that picture up and been like, hey, you know, I'm going to be real with you guys. You know, right. my, my publicist released this and this wasn't authorized. And, you know, when I saw that she had released this, I got so mad and I screamed because as somebody who's, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And she could have turned that into something positive. Right. 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 You know, but this I'm is learning a, to embrace myself. Right, I'm learning or... to embrace myself. But this is a real me. So sometimes when you see these made up images of us, you know, that's not how I wake up in the morning. Right. Right. right? You know, whatever. She could have turned to a completely different but, narrative. But right. now, we, you know, it's a Kardashian. So we have cease and desist letters and legalities. Right. And, <laughs> I've I've said this before. I can't well no, I, I can't wait because it's not like I want to fast forward time, but it's like I look forward to the day that just they will be gone. Like the Kardashians and the Jenners, it's like remember, you know, when the world was like obsessed with the Kardashians and the Jenners? Right, right. You know, like like that fat is gone. In the rear view. Re in the rear view. And that something that, you know, when VH1 does that's the two thousands, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> Lonnie Love will come on and be like, remember when everybody was into the Kardashians? Keeping up with the Kardashians. We all wanted a big ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, very quick. One thing I want to bring up, and I don't know if it's going to be quick or not, but we're going to see where this goes before we get into our interview with, uh, with Hemke Madera from Queen of the South. Did you see 2020 this past week did a... What, uh, I don't know. At this point, 2020, there it's like mini documentaries every every week about the Menendez brothers. 
Um, no, I didn't watch it, but I watched the... And the twist is that now there's... Oh, okay. I watched the movie or the... The, um, the miniseries? The miniseries. With um, this girl from... This lady from The Sopranos? Yeah. That was Okay, that was a Law & Order miniseries, yes. Yeah. She was great. She was fantastic. So... This happened in 89, so you're better at math than I am. It was 32 years, 32 ago. years ago. But the reason that they did it is because now this Gen Z is starting to discover the Menendez brothers. Mm-hmm. And they have turned it into a TikTok thing <laughs> where they will post about the Menendez brothers and all the footage. And they're reviewing the things and they're saying how like, you know, well, if this had happened nowadays, you know, their sexual abuse claims wouldn't have been like laughed at. And, you know, I don't think that they're lying because look how they're crying and that's not faked and this, that and the other. So I, I just I think it's interesting that, you know, so I've actually I don't want to say that I've studied the Menendez brothers case because I, I always forget like, that they're Cuban American. I haven't sat with like the you know discovery right, 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 right. and deposition transcripts and you know and made a really full delved legal into evaluation it. Yeah. of it. Right. But I have read upon it. Okay. Um, I have read upon it. I have read what the allegations are, what the mm-hmm. defenses were, um, and this is you know taking aside the mini series or what you've seen on TV. <laughs> yes, like I've Dick actually Wolf. like read on it. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> the thing. So, the sexual abuse claims, you can't get it twisted. And even if you see it through the lens of 2021, Mm -hmm. um, the sexual abuse claims, I do think in... I believe them. I do believe them. I believe them. I do believe them. And I but that think doesn't excuse that murder. in the lens of a twenty of twenty twenty, I do think they probably would have been. They would have probably been taken more seriously. Taken taken more seriously. They probably would have, in terms of jury instructions and mm-hmm. and, and the effect it would have had on the jury. Mm-hmm. It probably would have been um, different. Different, mm-hmm. yes, you different, and I think that the jury would have been a lot more susceptible and a lot more compassionate, under, in that compassionate sense. and understanding of the sexual abuse claims. Mm-hmm. However, the problem with the Menendez brothers' murder is that it was classic premeditation, right? Right, like classic, yeah, because so, they, I mean, they essentially were trying for almost like a self defense light. Defense. Yes. Um, motive. Mo- right, motive. Right, 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 motive. right, right. Um, it was a, a thing of motive. But again, the problem with them is that if you study the their case yeah. and you study the trajectory and the totality of the circumstances mm-hmm. of everything that led up to the night of them killing them and the facts of the case that night, um, it, it, it has classic premeditation which is you know first degree murder right. um they were killed with a shotgun yeah which makes it even more violent yeah so this wasn't in- well and she got up yeah like she tried to like run yeah i mean the blood the the yeah. scene was terrible like the crime scene yeah. um <clears throat> and their behavior after was also extremely yeah. questionable and these are things that are not debated um these aren't things that are are um up for discussion. These are yeah. facts. Yeah. Gen Z's whole thing is that like, if it, to your point, if it had happened today, they probably wouldn't have gotten, you know, life in jail or they would have. No, I think they would have. You, you still think it, they would have? Yeah, they would have. Yeah. They would have. I, I, yes, I think, as we said, the the issues with the, the child abuse or the, you know. The sexual that, abuse. That whole, the sexual abuse, that whole angle of it would definitely have been taken more seriously. Definitely. And, you know, if you remember, because um, we're old enough to remember, um, or even thereafter, the defense of, um, or it was a mitigating factor. Correct. Right, 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 right. Of the sexual abuse was laughed at. And it, it looked like a, a last minute defense strategy. Like pull like, out of a hat. We got to come up with something. Right, 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 right. So let's come up with this, you know, alleged bullshit story. Right, right. right. Um, and that's how a lot of people thought it was, a bullshit story. Right. But, yeah, even if it was true, which, yeah, I'm inclined to believe that it was. It, it um, I don't think it would have taken, I, I don't think the outcome of their of their trial would have been much different. Really? Yeah. I just didn't know how to become a TikTok thing. Yeah, it's become a TikTok thing. Because what, they're saying, what they were saying is that there, a lot of Gen Zers now are 
I guess there's also something to be said for the fact that we have all this information, right? So people are starting to rediscover things and they're, they're almost trying to play in a way Monday morning quarterback, Mm -hmm. you know, with a lot of these old legal things. And I think a lot of it is, it goes down to what we've been seeing lately where people find, you know, cases where they were erroneously convicted and, you know, they they try to like get those charges overturned or lessened or what have you. And it all actually really started because they found old videos and they thought that the guys were hot. And so that's kind of where it started. They would actually... his brothers? Yeah. They would actually play clips of it with Britney Spears' criminal in the background. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. Because mama, I'm, I'm in love, love with, with a criminal. criminal. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That could be so, another Britney Spears. <laughs> that's another... Yeah. Uh, uh, no. I mean... I... I, I I always try, I've always said it, I'm at heart a defense attorney. That is mm-hmm. what I, I don't know if it's because of my personality or just. Well, the, you have a very protector personality. I, I do, and I always feel that, like, I, I do it, I've always said this, in order for the legal system to work, and there's a lot of things wrong with the legal system. Right. I don't know. Just because I studied law does not mean that I think the legal system is perfect. But in order for the legal system to work, it has to work for everybody, even the guilty. Even the guilty. Yeah, that's true. Um, and and there's a lot of safeguards that have to be put into place to, ensure to make sure that even the guilty of the most heinous crimes are, you know, due process is served. Did because... you just quote the beginning of Law and Order? <laughs> <laughs> because... In order for you, right, for due process to work for the for you one day when you right, need it, if you need it, yeah, right, it has to work yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Um, but you know, a, a lot of these cases that you find new evidence on before, um, it, it, you know, it, there's something to be said about cases having racial components or even right. um, gender components you know uh that you know women were treated differently or obviously uh racial you know racial matters that you know somebody because of their color of their skin didn't get a a fair trial all those are very 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 true things that are still happening today um but then there's other things like in this case i mean these were two privileged you know kids in yeah because they were they were cuban-american but they weren't yeah I mean, they, they, I don't think they grew up, quote unquote, Guanito, you know? Right. And they, again, what happened with them, you know, and listen, if you, if you don't know too much about the Menendez brothers, go ahead and read upon it. It's actually a very interesting uh, case. I can't yeah. believe we're talking about the Menendez brothers on Pedro, let me tell you. <laughs> it's a very interesting case, and um, there's a lot of stuff on, on it at line, but their behavior before and after, they didn't do themselves any favors. No, you know? they really didn't. So that's what makes this particular story um so complicated i always watch on court tv um the parole proceedings of leslie van warren who was leslie ann warren leslie van warren warren i believe her name is who she was one of the people who one of the yeah one of the people who um was arrested uh in the um helter skelter oh okay she was one of the uh, the uh, uh, manson uh, Manson. girls right the, she's the one who killed the Labiancas. Oh, the okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And it was horrible. Like she strangled, I think, the woman with her with like a lamp cord and whatever. Yeah, it, it was very well, a heinous crime. Mm-hmm. Like we know that. And you know, she was eighteen when she did this. Yeah, they were kids. They were kids. Yeah, right. And she has spent her entire life since then to now. In and now she's in her seventies in jail. And I always watch her parole proceedings because she, you know. She's done the best that she could in jail. She educated herself. She she went to college. She's become a mentor, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I always ask myself, is this somebody who should be back in society? You know? Yeah. I mean, I actually, I always ask myself, can they? Because at 18, she went into jail. Right. No, she doesn't know what a life out of jail is. But, But aside from that, like, do you, like, do you think that that person should be back in society? You know, no matter like what bad of a crime she did you know we don't have to answer that question now but but you know it's something that when you start talking about these cases like this you you have to kind of consider that you know yeah. um there's people who will tell you no send them to, send them to this one or not the chair anymore you know uh, not from prison whatever yeah. you know um it, throw away the key them. yeah but other you know other people feel differently so yeah it's a very complex situation yeah well 
You know who may be facing some legal tr- troubles of her own? Other than somebody who posted a Khloe Kardashian picture? Yes, I'm talking about Queen of the South, uh, the show on USA with Alice, uh, Alice Braga. And season five, which is the final season, just starts in these uh, the next couple days. And we have with us Hemki Madera, who is on the show. He's actually one of the main characters. I think he's like her second in command, if I remember correctly. The last season was last year, so it's been a while. Um, and now, you know, we love us, our Dominicans. You know, he's he was born in Queens, but, you know, raised the Dominicano. Um, super, super, super cool guy. And um, now, without further ado, here's our interview with Hemki Madera. And welcome back, mi gente. So, as we told you, we are here with actor Hemke Madera from Queen of the South, Weeds, Brockmire, Spider-Man Far From Home. I mean, I would keep listing your credits, but this is only about a half hour uh, show we got here. So it would take way longer. So Hemke, uh, welcome to Pero Let Me Tell You. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Well, well thank you for having me. This is, uh, I'm honored. So I guess we'll start it off. You know, I mean, you, it, it's, when I was reading up on you what i found interesting and i love is that you you were born in queens but then you went back to the dominican republic right is usually the other way around but yeah um, i was like that's an interesting flip um what happened was my my mother i was she was was seven months pregnant she was seven months pregnant at the time or almost seven months so she went to visit her twin sister in new york and then there were some complications when she got there so they had to pull me out so that's what happened, you know, and then my mother, you know, was in very bad shape when she oh, when she had me. My father was in DR. So my twin, my mom's twin sister has a son named Henry. Mm-hmm. So she found a book of names, the name Hemke, Hemke, Henry, Henry, Hemke. <laughs> so when they named me, my mom woke up. And this is a story that I've been told all my life. I haven't questioned it much. I just said, okay, cool, sounds great. Let me just stick to it. And because I know that back in the seventies, the law was the state of New York law was if you don't name your child within nine days, the state would name you the sex. It would have been boy Malena. I don't know about New you York, but name- I I will tell you that a cousin of mine for the long when he was born around in the seventies as well, they didn't have a name for him, and for the longest time, yeah, it was birth certificate just said baby boy for Dallas. Oh, wow, and that's why we called him yeah. forever. We called him baby boy yeah. for the longest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So well, uh, so my, the, that that story is being told to me this way, saying that go they were freaking out about it because my dad is in the art. My grandmother, my mom's mom, for whatever reason, thought that it was the best idea not to tell to keep my father in the dark. And so my dad is in the Dominican Republic. He doesn't have the visa to come to the states. He says, "Wait a second, women give birth here in the Dominican Republic and they go home. Right. She's in New York, and what's going on for nine days?" So when they named me. My mother woke up and they said, here's your son, Henke. My mother went to Henke. What kind of a... It was going to be yeah. Raul. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so so, so from Raul, you ended up Henke. Yes. And Henke Luis, because my father's name is Luis. You know, I've been told that so many times. I was like, all right, so I guess it's true. So <laughs> it must be true. If, you, if the story hasn't that. changed, it's got to be true. I love it. I love yeah, it because it has, it, this reminds me of one of my one of my best friends is Dominican, and he his name is Gretzky, and they named him after Wayne Gretzky. And I'm like, why didn't they just name him Gretzky? And they go, no, because we wanted Gretzky. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Pretty funny that's stuff. a that's a great story. That is a great story. <laughs> so you, so, you know, my mom had like my mother, like my mom had a green card at the time and all that because all her siblings and all that stuff. But she lived in the Dominican Republic. So two months later, after she recouped, we went home. So you were raised in, in you in were raised DR. in DR. I was I was I was raised in DR until the age of ten when I came to New York to learn English because I didn't speak English at the time. They put me in American schools over there. Like they put me like they put me like in English classes, and I just went there to play. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Mira eso, gringo um, y no podía hablar inglés. So they sent me to live with my aunt in New York. My mom and dad would come every three weeks because my mother had a clothing store. So I'll see my parents for a whole week every three weeks. It was, you know, it, was, it was sacrifice, but they wanted me to learn English and stuff. As I say, the first year I didn't learn squat. All I was doing was, you know, it's bilingual class and watching the novelas with my, with my aunt. I would, I would <laughs> say well, it you, were te- you were 10, though. The, the novelas at that time were at least the good ones. Yeah, well, that was pretty good, I guess. <laughs> early 80s, and then, right? Like... <laughs> and then that summer, in between the two years, I I pretty much just stayed in, in the house watching TV and watching American TV. 
when I came back in September to, to New York, I was speaking English. You know, three months later, I'm like speaking, speaking fluently in English. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then I, when I, I went back home when I was 12, mm-hmm. and then I came back to the States after I graduated from high school, and then been here ever since. So when you graduated high school, now you're probably like 17, 18. Did you have the acting bug then, or how did how did the acting I, bug develop? The acting bug started when I was five years old. When I was yeah. five, I, I watched On the Waterfront. Oh, and I okay. remember the, the the famous, and it was in English. You know, I, I understand what was happening. I was just looking. I was I was always I was being fascinated by by moving pictures. So when the famous glove scene comes, I noticed that he took it and she cannot leave. She tries to get the glove a couple of times. But he's like, "Oh my God, he's not letting her go." So I turned to my parents and said, "I want to do what he does. Hmm. I want to be an actor. I want to do that." My parents mean to me, "Yeah, me." <laughs> of course, a, a it, your your parents are Dominican, just like <laughs> ours. We're Cuban. So it, you don't do that. I said, said, I thought por favor. But lo grande del caso es que when I, I then I started doing it again after high school. That's when I did my first audition and I booked my first gig. And one thing that I tell everybody out there, every parent out there. Having the support of my parents, 150% unconditional support. Mm-hmm. But just the fact that I that I had their full support and my biggest cheerleaders, that Goes changed everything. Yeah. And, and, and I, I never never gave up, even at hard times. I never, I always knew I was going to make it, whatever that, what making it meant. Right. Uh, it was going to happen because I've always had the support. Oh, yeah, my papi siempre decía, you could be a shoe shiner. But be the best damn shoe shiner you can ever be. You. The best you can be without backstabbing anybody, without hurting anybody. Just be honest and be a good person and go that, forward. That sounds almost identical to what I would hear in my household. Yeah. So, yeah. again, it's I think it's something about like Caribe. You know, that yeah. we, we, we yeah, have no, that. And, and, something in the water. The no, it doesn't say no says if your head gets too big, I'll go there and kick your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Heard that too. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so you you start acting the, then uh, right after high school. What are some of the yeah. first jobs or... Yeah, you, you mentioned know, your first your first My, my, gig. First, job was was in, my first job was in the Dominican Republic. It, it was with the director of Poncho Rodriguez. I did this miniseries called In La Olla, which means you know, being broke. I remember I did a course, a class with him. It was like a six-week class. Okay, so fast forward, I booked the job. I'm there, I have the first scene coming up. I'm like, okay, I'm nervous as hell. I've never done it besides class. I go in, I say all my lines, first take, this, the director comes, Alfonso comes and goes, great job, great job, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's try breathing. <laughs> I, was, I was so nervous that I said all my lines in one breath. Poor day. <laughs> um, but then after that, it just, it just became like a second home, and it just became a second skin. And the more that I did it, and then I, I took classes in New York. And then I went back to the Dominican Republic, and I did 250 episodes of a sitcom over there. Wow! And back back then, it was to 1999 to 2001. The Dominican Republic didn't understand to have like a weekly show. Mm-hmm. It was it was new. We had to have one new episode every day. Wait, Half an hour you episode. did 250 daily episodes? episodes. Uh, well, we, should, we used to shoot three days a week, and we used to shoot multiple. It was like five episodes. Yeah, we, we have five new episodes every week. That's insane. That's like acting boot camp. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, I mean, that's, that, well, that was that, my school. That's akin to, I mean, like here, the, the daytime soaps. Where I mean, they're they're yeah, cranking out like a good ten episodes a week or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. So that yeah, was pretty much. So that was a sitcom was in the cool. DR. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, call us Electro Locos. It was like a kids sitcom. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty fun. But that was my school. I was you know I was working with three and four cameras at the time. It was a sitcom. Yeah. So that was my that was my college. Yeah, that's that was college. My that's boot camp. <laughs> so after I did after I did that and we did that for two. Two years, then I did my first play in La Olla. Sorry, in La Olla, no, eh, Pantallas. Sorry, Pantallas, Queens. It was mainly, it was um, three actors after this bomb went off. So we were three main actors, Mm -hmm. and we were playing like eight different characters of TV shows or soap operas or movies that we wanted to play Mm -hmm. as actors. So we would go back from from one character to all those different characters and back again to the characters of the actors 
And that was in after that, that was in DR as well. DR. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, in DR as well. Then after that, I went to New York, and I did um, a bunch of plays off off Broadway, and I was part of the Spanish Repertory Theater there as well in Puerto Rican Traveling Theater. Um, and then after that, I did Law and Order Criminal Intent, which that was what got me my union card. And then I moved to LA. Order. With 12, yeah, well, yeah, you're a New York actor. You had to do at least one of them, right? Right. That isn't that the rule? If you're in New York, you're an actor. Like by law, you have to do one of the Law and Orders. <laughs> it seems that way, right? <laughs> so then, in 2000, 2004, I packed my bags from New York with twelve hundred bucks and not knowing a soul, oh. and I moved to LA. That takes some balls, man. Wow. I mean, that is a whole new world out there. I mean, what? I didn't know anybody. What prompted you to do that? I'm always curious about when somebody just says, "You know what? But carajo, I gotta do this." Like, what? Uh, you know, something I've been wanting to do since I was a kid. I always wanted to go to Hollywood. Okay. But you know, I was I was working steadily in New York doing plays. Right. I wasn't making bang, but I was living. You know. But then something told me, you know, empty is time. And as soon as I got that, my my my. Como digo, my, my, my union car, I just jumped. <laughs> I jumped, and I remember buying a motorcycle for 700 bucks. Uh, I gave 300 bucks to this guy where I live. Like, I slept on his floor of okay. the studio apartment with his dog stepping on me. Oh, shit. And I had 200 bucks left. No agent, no job, no nothing. I thought it was going to be something similar to New York, where they have, like, you know, open calls and a lot of things. It's very so different I, out I there, I found right? out. Yeah, I called a friend of mine in New York and I said, I need an agent. Who <laughs> you any recommendations? And he said, Bob Waters Agency. He is a New York, he's a New York, uh, he used to be in New York. Okay. And now. It's like a transplant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he'll be your guy. So he says, he'll be your guy. So I literally just barged into his office. And, um, and I said, I know this is not the way to do things, <laughs> but I. But I'm gonna. I just moved here from I just here from moved from New York. This is my stuff, and um, and um, he signed me the next day. Oh wow! 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 Um, you must have been the uh, hell out of him, or been very scared. They said, they said, they said it was know. ballsy, you know. <laughs> I did it, and it was like it was scary, that's for sure. <laughs> but um, but I did it, man, and then and, and, and this to show things might look very difficult and very impossible to reach at times, but nothing is impossible. Some some things will take a lot of work, but nothing is impossible. Not at all. I mean, not at all. You know, not at all. You just have to work hard. Yeah. No. And, so. and I mean, you're definitely, I think, the the example of that. I mean, you to your to your point. I mean, you were working steadily in New York, but I mean, you have been working steadily uh, on TV. I mean, like again, I, I hate to you know, I'm not trying to harp on it or anything, but like. Just looking at your IMDb, it's just like yeah, I mean, bam, bam, from, bam, 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 bam. Uh, like my name is Earl to Burn Notice, the Good Doctor, uh, the uh, New Girl, uh, Bosch, um, Agent X. Yeah, no, I mean, I've been I've been blessed. I tell you one thing: look, look, uh, talent. It's important to have, and uh, and not only just God given talent or just you know born talent. You have to work on it. And I work really hard, and I've never taken a no for an answer. Yeah, I remember when I used to when I, when I got to New York when I got to LA there were I used to audition mm-hmm. and there were always five guys that always always got the gigs. <laughs> always. These are the guys you would always see at the auditions out there before. And, you? I, and one one of those guys will god them get the job. Yeah. But I used to say to myself, don't worry, one of these days those five guys are going to be working. And then they're going to have a choice but to give me the gig. True. Mm. And that's what and that's what happened. True. You know, I was always close, but I wasn't. You know, I didn't have enough credits. I wasn't big enough of a name, and all this stuff. But at that point in Weeds, you know, everybody was working. They really liked me, but those guys were working. And Weeds was supposed to be a two character. I mean, sorry, a two episodes arc. Oh wow! That's it. You wound up doing like what was it? And seven seventeen episodes. Yeah. So was Weeds? Would you consider that like? I don't want to say your big break because you were already working. Oh, it was, de- it, was definitely, it was definitely my big break in the States. It was my big break. It was my recognition. It was what gave me popular no- notion of, of people seeing my work. And how was your experience on that show? Amazing. I, I remember when we did the, when we did the scene um, 
when we bring Celia back from from the hall, and I'm doing this scene with Mary Louise Parker, it's like my first big scene with her. Yeah, wow. and I noticed that she goes up and down in different takes like a play, and I'm like, oh, I could play this. Yeah, she's a stage actress. I mean, tra- yeah. her training. Yeah. So I, you know, I will go up with her, come down with her, and then after the after that, after we did that scene, she kept looking at me, and then she left. And I'm like, oh boy, what did I do? Uh-oh. What did I do? What the, what, what the hell did I do? But I, I played it cool. I was like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. So What's the worst she thing comes I can do? Back. She, she comes back and says, I just spoke to the, I just spoke to the, to the, to the writers. I want more of you. You are amazing. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. Like, wow. you know, but I, I don't, I don't give compliments. You are a great actor. I'm like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, well, por dentro. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm just <laughs> you're trying to play it cool, cool, right? But, yeah. but you don't want to play it cool because you're all excited. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And so, some something we we always like to you know talk about here on the show, since we're you know kind of a Hispanic Latin angled show, um, is obviously the Hispanic or Latin experience. And obviously, being in Hollywood, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stories you have from either being typecasted or not having an, enough roles for like hispanic and latin people like what has your experience been with that i've been getting this question lately a lot mm-hmm. and that and that and i will say the most honest answer i could give you from the bottom of my heart it's the best kind things are changing yeah they're definitely better than it was before but there's definitely now a lot of roles of latinos that are not just gangbangers mm-hmm. they're lawyers or doctors or even superheroes on on, on the big screen it needs to change more, and it will change more. History has taught us that things change, even at small pace, but it does, for the most part. But we as Latinos, we're the biggest minority in this country. And this is, and I say this with all, I love my class, I love my Latinos, but if we unite as Latinos as one force, nobody can deal with us. Yeah. If you, if you see the African Americans, they, they support each other. They're one unit. They make their movies, and people, and they go see them. Just because you're Mexican or you're Cuban, you're Dominican, you're Puerto Rican, you're Colombian, you're Argentinian, there's no borders. We're just Latinos and we stand together. Just we are forced and nobody can knock us down. And Hollywood has no choice but to give us what we deserve. And I've always said, it doesn't matter the race that you are. If you do your job and you're, you, you're the perfect person for that job, you should get it, regardless of your race. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But things are definitely changing. And not as fast and as quick as we would love to but we have to make that we have to make the hollywood change we have to be we cannot just change we cannot let somebody else we cannot let somebody else do the change for us yeah well do you even like in, in terms of even the variety of of roles because for example you being dominican you know do, do you see like uh maybe a change in terms of like now you know uh, yes, we're all uh, Latinos, but you know there's now more like Dominican roles, or you know roles Char- that are characters, characters that are, that are Dominican just... or Cuban. Oh no, definitely, yeah. Because oh, I, definitely, I feel yeah. that for so long, you know, Hollywood kind of not that they got it wrong, but it was so homogenous. Kinda, homogenous, like everybody, if you were Latino, it looked the same way and acted the same way, and it was like the same token kind of roles. Más tarde, más temprano, your character was going to be Mexican. Yeah. Exactly, um, yeah. 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 And, and, and that's the reality, right? Yeah. yeah. Look, and that's, that's one thing I have to say. If we stand together as as a unit and we get more opportunities as writers and producers, so we could write this. If you leave it to the to a race that, that has very minimum knowledge of Latinos as a whole, because for the most part, Latinos are Mexican. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in this country. That's how they see us. That's how but if you have then you go there and you like for example like in Brockmire, Brockmire was straight up a Dominican role, mm-hmm. right? It was a Dominican role, and they didn't write it as a Dominican role; they wrote it as Latino. But when I came in and I said, "Hey guys, you know the Dominicans and baseball and all that stuff," it's they like, went yeah, crazy for it. So they just brainer. wrote, so they just wrote for a, like a Dominican character. In my show now, there's going to be a different Latinos from different countries. 
I'm not going to say much more about that, but cause and what, and what show is see. that? Is that uh, is it's that a little show, Queen of the South? Is that a little, a little, tiny show, a little, a little thing? Tiny. It's been, it's on USA. It's one of the biggest shows in the last, you know, at least four years because you guys are going into your fifth season. You know, <laughs> yeah. casi nada. Well, no, yeah. you know, a blip. Casi nada. Casi nada. <laughs> casi nada. Look, man. I, I look. We all want things to change for the better, and and you will. But it, as, again, we have to stand together. And then I love it, like, like what these powerhouses of women are doing. Like, Zoe Saldana has her own production company. Yeah. America Ferrer also has her production company. Eva. All these women are like, okay, not only that they get their jobs to themselves, meaning they hire themselves, but they hire the right people for the, for the, for the roles. Right. Yeah. And support and push Latinos forward. Right. That's because interesting. If, you, if you don't do it for yourself, you're not going to do it. Like, that's the reality. If you don't do it for yourself and for your people, you can have no, no, other said, people to do this. No, 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 yeah. It's something interesting that I hadn't thought about. And just from what you were mentioning, you know, you mentioned all these Latinas who've taken the initiative to start the production company. I think it's interesting that the biggest faces of, of these, you know, Latino, Latina focused productions are women. And I, I guess that just comes from that extra necessity of like if they're not writing roles for latinos they're really not writing them for latinas yeah and that and that is the reality of it and you know latino women in general are so strong yeah women in general are strong and for whatever reason the history in, in this world we want to put them under us when they should be above us because they're so strong they're so right. amazing and beyond so yeah like you say they don't write the roles for them so they have to take the, the strength that they have as women and say, you know what? I'm going to use the name that I have, open a production company, hire myself and hire others, and go forward. Tom Cruise does. That's what he does. He has a production company. He hires himself. Yeah, nobody believes that. Right. The <laughs> same thing, in my eyes. Well, and I, I mean, applaud this, all these it, women. It's it's refreshing because I mean, in, in this way, as you say, it's 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 not only everybody like being together, but it's it's more authentic you know, stories, like more authentic, real Hispanic stories because something, you know, as, as we mentioned, is that they would always write the character Mexican. And it's not even that they would write the character me Mexican. They would write it incorrectly, like, because right. they, they would base it, like, Mexican stereotypes. They wouldn't even... Oh, yeah. It wasn't even the complexity because Mexico is, like, a multi-diverse, you know, That's country right. with different types of people. It's like, it was like over and over again the same character so it's just it's it's interesting and frustrating that it's taken this long you know well, for them to finally we're you know, taking the reins baby right. we're yeah. taking the reins yeah yeah well, look look even talking about my show itself they um we have a lead this brazilian playing a mexican we have the second lead which is a dominican playing a mexican but we obviously we do our job and we have done our research and we we respect and follow this. We don't make it like you say, we're not, we're not a caricatura. Claro, yeah. claro. That's I made this guy who's from Sinaloa, you know, so I speak like from the region to the point that people had no idea that I was Dominican. People from me like Mexican would say, Are you, What? <laughs> they I, thought you were, I, I, I thought you were Mexican. Like, no, I'm Dominican. Like, oh my God. Because the thing is that you have to give it your own, you have to respect whoever wherever character wherever character is from. Mm -hmm. Unless it's, it's a comedy that then there's a comedy that is that kind of comedy that is bringing on. It was a Saturday Night Live comedy sketch, right? Very broad, yeah. So okay. now, now that you said that, I'm curious. Like when you were doing like you know the cartel and 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 all that, you know, and weeds. It, where where would you like study the accent from? Uh, documentaries, movies. Uh, at that point in weeds, it was a little bit different in the sense that it wasn't. I didn't have that much stuff that I can grab from, like now. Mm -hmm. So I will go and speak to Mexican Americans, and I will just hear them speak, and I will ask them questions, and just be as authentic as I could be. Because again, yeah, even to to this day, and I do the same things that I've been doing every year. I start watching documentaries. I start watching the news of um, Mexicans. Native Mexicans speaking English, mm -hmm. just to see like okay everything is in the same pattern. Okay, I'm good. Uh, because and the same thing I do in any role that I play, I do the homework at home. So when I get to the set, I just play. 
that is the thing. I've been blessed enough to work with a lot of great actors. Now, not just amazing actors, but they're just so much given as human beings. They just accept you. And, of course, you, you do your job. Because claro, if, you claro, walk yeah, into, yeah. if you walk into a set, you don't, if you walk into my set and you're not ready, it's not that I'm going to chew you up, but I'll make sure you're going to have a, a bad experience. Not, not that I'm, I'm going to make you have a bad experience, but you will have a bad experience on the scene. Because everybody else there is prepared. Yeah. You know, and they're not there wasting time. You have, and that's one thing that Alfonso taught me. One of the first things he taught me when I was starting this up. You do your homework at home. And you come to set, prepare with all your lines. Because remember one thing. While you're waiting in your trailer, there's actually somebody with a light in the, on, the, on the ladder about yeah. to fall. And the, last, the, the best thing you could do as a thank you is you go there, you do your job, and then move into the next scene quicker. Yeah. yeah. That's how it be my motto for 22 years. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's definitely served you well. I mean, you know. So, anyway, bueno, this has been an awesome, awesome chat. Yes. Um, thank you thank again, you. man. Thank you so much. We, yeah, I learned no, so much. Thank you for having me. But <laughs> yeah. I, want, I, want to, I want to close by saying one thing, guys. Thank you so much. You guys are funny and amazing. I love what you guys do. Thank and to you. all of you out there, wait for season five is about to come out. And look out for my wife's album is about to be released, Jessie Lynn Madera. Oh, okay. She has, um, her debut album. She has already had an EP that came out. Just look there. Jessie E is J E S S E L Y N N uh, Madera. Madera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just look her up. It's amazing. You go, send us, yeah, send um, us the album art, and we'll put it on our Instagram. Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, we'll definitely do that. I'll do that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll plug I'll your wife's sure. album. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. It's, as soon as you hear, after you hear her, it has nothing to do with me. You will promote her just because she's amazing. Nothing to do with him. Oh, absolutely. That's how great she is. Good, good. Como decía, los amigos míos iban a verla ella por mí. Me votaron. Y they'll come back for her. That's awesome. That's awesome. Bueno, Hemke, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. We cannot wait to see all all the stuff you got coming, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Un abrazo fuerte y pa'lante. A ti, igual. Good night. Look at me. I'm recording We Are the World. (laughs) (laughs) Because <laughs> it's just headphones just broke. You know what I've always thought? Like when people record, have those, you know, in session, you know, whatever. Right. With the fucking headphones. Well, now you know why. You know, that whole video of like Celine Dion and Barbara Streisand that they're like hanging with like the headphones. You know, it's like. Well, no, but that's just for dramatic of a like, video. Either put them on or put them, take them off. <laughs> Right, I mean, me pone mad all these videos with the headphones. Okay, but in my defense, like right now, I'm holding it because I can't take it off because no, I need I know, to make sure. I know, I know, but the, you know, the whole <laughs> headphone thing, it's like, I'm in mierda with the freaking headphones. Like, oh my God, t-. or like when it's like the headphone in only one ear, I'm like, either put them on or take them off. Yeah, <laughs> stop it with the headphones. It's like, oh my gosh, yes. But We Are the World, the video to We Are the World. You know, it's so sad. <laughs> take a picture of me doing That kids this. today, like, like elementary school kids, that song means nothing to them. That's true. We are the world. And that was such an elementary school staple that for really so was. long. Really, really. You know, was. instead now it's, you know, Old Town Road. Oh, well, you know, when you have sex with Satan. Oh. <laughs> That's know, a whole other episode. That whole That's a whole other episode. Him, I will say this. I don't particularly care for him. Right. I don't like his. I, you know, I love hip hop and right, I, right, right, right. I don't care for his brand of, of music of right, hip hop right. am I a little bit upset that he beat Mariah Carey's record oh hell yeah I am <laughs> like <laughs> yeah I am I really a little bit a little bit I am so like, what really upsets me is not it's not even that like her record fell because you know for those people who don't know Mariah Carey had the longest running um, single of all time with One Sweet, One Sweet Day with Boys to Men right. that song was number one on Billboard for 16 weeks and she she held that record for 25 years. It wasn't even that the record fell. Is that the record fell to that song. Right, right, right. Because that song sucks. That song is going to go up there with like La Magare- Macarena and Gangnam Style and, you know, right, right. Uh, the Ketchup Girls, the you know, all that crappy music. <laughs> well, maybe not because now those are all one-hit wonders. He now has a, a, another number one. Right. It's not even that he's a... I'm, it's not even that he's a one-hit wonder. It's the song's crappy, you know. But I will say this though, I I, I think that he, I give him. I I saw the video. I I don't like the video. Mm. I, I don't like the video because, I, I mean, I think the video is like, 
beyond provocative. And I don't know. I, I, I don't care when people are provocative for the sake of being provocative. Mm. And I, 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 I don't know. Maybe he, he was provocative with a greater meaning. Maybe, maybe not. I, and I don't care for the song. But I give him credit for, like, not giving a shit. <laughs> like, right, right. Like, this is what I'm going to do and have This is it. what I'm going to do and you can like it or you can not like it. Especially knowing that he has a really young fan base. Yeah. Because I know Old Town Road was technically not for kids, but it is for kids. But kids, yeah. Right. I mean, he that song got to where it got because to kids, TikTok yeah. and you know, kindergarten classes. You know? Right, right, right. Freaking Tristan's school did a whole like dance routine to that song. You <laughs> oh, know? no, I hope well, But along with other, you know, yeah, millions yeah, yeah, of other yeah, kids. Yeah. Right? So I give him credit. You know, I was like, you do you. <laughs> you do you. Like, No, he did Satan. That's the point of the video. Yeah, but like he... <laughs> Like he, you have to have balls. I mean, he went against you know, kindergarten mothers. Like that's oh, no. a that's a that's a that's really, a force to be rocking with. I think kindergarten mothers across the country in yoga pants. When those <laughs> people get together, watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Because shit is happening. Uh, but so. bueno, now that we've plumbed the depths of hell, you know, we're probably a little thirsty. We are <laughs> probably we a little are. thirsty. So. I have two sodas to give okay. today. Do they go like hand in hand? And one is a good and one is bad. Okay. So the good soda, the 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 the, the, the fizzy, the, the crispy soda, right, the right, fresh, bubbly, crisp, bubbly good soda, goes to as you saw. We we both got vaccinated this week. Damn, we do everything together. We really we, do. We even got the same vaccine without knowing it. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, to all those people working there, and like I know it's their yeah. job, but it's like I feel that that's such a selfless job it's a thankless and, job and, too yes and you have to deal with so many things so you know an acknowledgement to them Absolutely. for having to deal with so many different types of people being out i mean i know a lot of them have been vac- vaccinated right at this point if not all of the frontline workers but for so long they weren't yeah um so you know an acknowledgement to them for their hard work my flat soda <laughs> is going to one of the just slimiest and most terrible people in congress and that is Matt Gates and his hair. <laughs> I love that you're giving it to him and his hair. Right. Have you seen his hair? <laughs> I, I not noticeably, but it looks re- like it's it's always looked very Elvisy, but okay. right now it looks like an off 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 the strip, almost oh. like not in Nevada, off the strip like Las like, Vegas like an Elvis on Freedmont. Cheap Las Vegas Elvis impersonator. Oh, like an Elvis on Freedmont. Yes. Oh my God, Fremont, <laughs> downtown Vegas. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, listeners. That's a whole other episode. That's a whole other episode. A whole other that episode. Fremont experience that we had last that year <laughs> or a year and a half ago. Oh, I'm still recovering from it. But yeah, like he's so slimy and nasty, and like, and I don't even say that because of his what latest, happened. Right, what right, happened right. now? These allegations that are against him. But he's just so even before the way he was just and again it's not even that he's a Republican or conservative. I don't have a problem with that, but just the way that he would talk and mm-hmm. how condescending he was. And it's like, oh, look look who's against look who's on the other side now. Shoe on the other so, foot. Um yeah. The 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 gasless soda to him and his hair. Him and his hair. Okay. Yeah. Well maybe he'll use the soda to, you know, wash his hair and it won't be a slime. Oh, that'll be sticky. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, my last soda actually goes to a friend of the podcast, um, Treyes Cottage, and oh, that, yes. that's spelled T-R-E-L-L-E-S. And the reason that um, I'm giving it to them, you guys should all check them out on Instagram, check out their shop. They have a lot of cute, um, like, croquetica, um, you know, shirts and, and merchandise. They actually have croque, croquetica party supplies, um, so you can have your, your very own croqueta party. But the reason that I'm actually giving it uh, to them is because they currently are selling a shirt in honor of Autism Awareness Month, which is all April long, that you may have seen me wearing in in some of our posts. It says um, different, has an equal sign. The equal sign is crossed out with a blue line and then the word less. And that's a play on a quote that I'm not going to be able to quote verbatim, but by Temple Graydon, which basically says that, you know, just because I'm different doesn't mean that I am less than. And they are donating 100% of all money from the sale of that t-shirt to a local uh, facility here that does help children who are on the spectrum. So wanted to give them a shout out. That's really commendable. That's just beautiful. And, you know, if you guys can, you should definitely go check them out. Buy a lot of their merch, but definitely buy the uh, different, it does not equal less shirt. Very nice. 
Now I feel so frivolous for my Matt Gates. <laughs> Very well, nice. Well, no, because you gave the the the, the bubbly yeah. soda to frontline workers. Yeah. No, and you know autism. Um, um, you know, I remember when I started. Um, you know, for our listeners who don't know, before I went to law school, I actually um, studied psychology and I was sort of in the field. And um, I remember when I started like my psych psych work, mm-hmm. I hadn't heard of autism. This was in yeah, the late we're, 90s. We're old enough to remember when it was a new thing. I, I didn't know what autism mm-hmm. was. Um, and now it's like everybody knows somebody who has autism. Yeah. And various yeah. levels of the spectrum. Right. And, and, um, yep. they're in your family, you know, they're yeah. your friends' kids, you know, yeah. um, just how much autism awareness. Yeah. Because the, 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 you know, people say, oh, there's more autism now, which there are higher numbers, but, but it's, it's also an issue of diagnosis. Correct. Correct. Because before it was something that was gravely misdiagnosed. Right. Um, so, and you know, what I and yeah, look, or, one or, hand, they don't understand, they don't understand anything. anything yeah. Yeah. But as we've learned, through Saint Elsewhere, which you know what? In our next episode, we need to talk about. We're gonna get the into Tommy it. Westfall. We're gonna universe. get into the Tommy Westfall universe. In in Saint Elsewhere, they were talking about autism in the 1980s. That was the 80s. That's why the show was ahead of its time. No, listeners, seriously. In our next episode, let's write it down. Okay. Like, so we can make sure to bring it up. Okay. The whole Tommy Tommy Westfall because I think people got a kick out of it. So All anyway, right. well, no, everybody, we hope this was a long week. <laughs> I'm really glad it's over. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm really glad it's over. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I had I had so many notifications and bells and dings I'm and whistles. The way you said it right now, like it just te salió. Like it, did, it was. It I could. I, I, felt I was the thinking exhaustion. now. Like there were moments, like when I was in the hospital this week because of my mom, uh-huh. that I would just go and sit in my car and I'm like, oh, it's quiet. <laughs> like, it's quiet. I'm in my car. I didn't have the radio on. It was like the so- the air, the sound of the air conditioning was, was enough. soothing enough. It's like this will do. So, with that note, uh, <laughs> we hope everybody listened, laughed, and learned. And remember to grab your pastelito, your croqueta, and your cafecito. And thank you for joining us, everybody. Have a great weekend. Have a great Friday. Um, see you next week. All right, cuídense, mi gente. Bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismael Llano, produced by Ismael Llano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. 